Welcome to the Mentor Podcast, where the most highly motivated entrepreneurs come to get their weekly dose of financial stability with host Ron LeGrand, as well as other nationally recognized thought leaders who will teach you how to get, grow, and protect your wealth. Well, hello again. Welcome to TheMentorPodcast.com. I'm Ron LeGrand, and beside me is Tony Javier. In our never-ending quest to try to get you guys a source of finding good quality leads that you can depend on, uh, Tony's going to w- discuss that subject today, but something you probably haven't heard about yet, and that's TV commercials. So, Tony, tell us um, who you are and uh, and how important you are. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, Tony Javier, been uh, in the business a little over 20 years now. Um, so I started uh, investing in real estate uh, in high school. I actually bought a program. I know, Ron, you've been in the business a long time, uh, but there's another gentleman that uh, w- uh, used to teach people how to buy properties with no money down, which is Carlton Sheets. Uh, um, do, you, do you know that Carlton Sheets delivered the first speech that got me to go to my first seminar to get me in real estate? Oh, really? That's amazing. He and I became friends after that. Uh, he, I tell you what, he generated a lot of customers for us because <laughs> he was just doing that. One, he didn't have a back end. And the company that was promoting him was out of Chicago. And obviously, they didn't know what a back end meant either. But uh, mm-hmm. uh, we had a good relationship, Carlton and I. Yeah, yeah. I think you got a lot of people in the business. So I bought a $200 course um, from TV commercials, which is uh, ironic. Um, so bought a two hundred dollars course. Um, got infatuated with the business, and within about five months, I bought my first couple properties, which was September of two thousand one. So right when nine uh, eleven hit, yeah. um, bought my first two properties, and since then I bought over a thousand properties using the exact same method of no money down, which is basically raising money and having people uh, invest in your deals and paying them a nice return uh, in uh, you know for the money. And uh, grown a great business since then, and uh, now we, my main business is uh, helping people generate inbound motivated sellers with TV commercials, which has been something that's uh, changed the game for me over the last eleven years. I started uh, eleven years ago with TV commercials. Uh, it's actually kind of an interesting story. Uh, back, uh, let's see, twelve years ago, I met a gentleman at a networking event. And he invited me to a poker game. Uh, we became friends and he said, hey, I know this guy that uh, is having a poker game. And so I was like, cool, I'll, I'll come. I love poker. So we go down in this guy's basement and I see these two guys and I'm like, I recognize them from TV. I'm like, those guys are on TV. And so I purposely sat, sat next to one of them because I had this whole celebrity factor thing in my head. And it was just a guy doing local TV commercials. And I said... What? Uh, tell me, tell me about TV. Like, is it like I see you all the time? And and I just thought it was like a branding thing. You know, people think TV is just branding. And he's like, I'm doing millions of dollars a year of business, and all I do is TV commercials. He's like, people call me directly. Other people that I don't know see my TV commercials and tell other people about me. Um, he's like, people trust you. He's just telling me about you know everything about TV and. I said, oh, that's cool. And I started drilling him with questions. And he said, you know what? Talk to my media guy, Drew. He's the one that helped me get on TV. So I called Drew Monday morning and I said, hey, Drew, I heard you're the TV guy. He's like, yeah, let me, let me, I think I know what your business is. Uh, It's buying houses. Let me go to the stations. I'll negotiate some rates for you. I'll bring them to you. And if you like it, well, we can do a commercial for you. Like, okay. So it comes back to me and he's like, for $3,000 a month, I can get you hundreds of commercials. It was like three or 400 commercials a month for Mm $3,000. And at that time, I think I was doing, I think I'd maybe just stop phone book, but I think I'd maybe been paying like $500 a month for phone book. So a little bit more expensive than phone book, but way more reach. Right. And so the first month I spent $3,000 and made $35,000 and 11 years later, it's still my number one lead channel. It's the most consistent. And I get anywhere from a five times return to a 12 times return on investment. And so a few years ago, after many years of people saying, why don't you show other people what you're doing? Finally, I said, you know what? I know what scripts work. I know what shows work. We've tweaked and tested a bunch of stuff over at that time. It was about eight years we had we had data. And instead of just showing people what I was doing, I went to my media guy, Drew, and I said, hey, will you do the same for uh, clients that I find? 
if, uh, if, if I can show them everything that I've done and show them my systems. And so we partnered up on this. And so we now license spots throughout the country and we have, um, over a hundred real estate investors running TV commercials with us and they're getting similar results where they're getting immediate, uh, immediate results in the first 30 days and doing anywhere from most clients are doing a five time, five to 10 times return on investment which by itself, just the investment by itself uh, is is incredible. But the amount of attention that it gets for you, your brand, and the trust and credibility it, it, it brings to your clients when they do business with you yeah. has been like nothing else that I've done in my business. Are these 60-second commercials? They are 30-second commercials. 30 seconds. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I can also tell you that what you just said was probably measured in the front end profit from the property. Nothing to do with the back end profits for years if we don't quickly wholesale a property or mm -hmm. rehab it. So the cost is measured just from that. By the time you add in the back end stuff, it will easily dwarf what the cost was on the front end if you don't if you hold on to the property for a while. So uh, which is what I do. I lease option amounts to tenant buyers. If I buy on terms, I sell on terms. Mm -hmm. I buy for cash, I sell for cash. Uh, usually wholesale today in this crazy market we're in right now, I make as much wholesale as I almost as much as I could rehab and retail and holding on to it for six months. So, hundred percent. Well, we better get to work finding out exactly what you can do for our clients and uh, what it costs and so forth. So you're gonna you're gonna create thirty second commercials for them, right? Yeah. So. Um... When I was brought, you know, many people over the years have been like, you need to show people what you're doing. And I didn't really know what that looked like. Like, I I just thought that maybe I just had something in my market that worked. I didn't know whether it worked in other markets. And so when I decided to do this, instead of showing people, I really wanted to implement it for them because I've seen people that I've kind of mentioned TV commercials over the years, I saw a couple people try and do it on their own and they just didn't do it right, right? And there's so many different elements to TV. You have to script it correctly. You have to buy the right shows. You have to have an easy to remember phone number. You have to have an easy to remember domain. There's just a lot of different elements people don't understand. And even when you tell them how to do it, they still can't 100%, you know, uh, execute yeah, I've and done. so I wanted to I wanted to make sure that if I showed people my formula that they executed it correctly, right? And I really wanted to help them with it. So when we work with our clients, we script the commercial, we go to the stations and negotiate the rates so we can negotiate rates better than anybody can. So not only can we negotiate better rates, but we also know what works and what works is actually the the pretty cheap commercials that you can get. Mm -hmm. So we've talked to some people that have been like, hey, I tried TV, it didn't work. So we'll look at their commercials and they were on like HGTV and all these other cable channels that are way expensive. Um, but when you do it right, which we have the formula for, you can actually get a lot of commercials for a small ad spend. So we, I'll, 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 I'll share an example with you. We had a guy... Um, on the West Coast, he was spending, um, I think it was like $10,000 a month. He was only getting like 50 spots a month, so 50 commercials a month. And he had a lot of other things wrong with his commercial. Well, we went into his ad spend. He was buying on the wrong stations, the wrong show. So we took that same $10,000 we were able to get him hundreds of spots a month. We actually made it work for him. We made it work so well that um, he took it and he started duplicating it in other markets. So now instead of spending 10 grand a month in one market, which had he not found us, he probably would have stopped and quit. Now he's spending $150,000 in multiple markets, um, you know, using the same formula that, he, that we're plugging into other markets, which shows it works and um, shows that, you know, when, and this guy's a really smart guy, he's got money, he's smart. Um, he just wasn't able to put the pieces together just because that's not what he does. And so we, um, we set people up to shoot the commercial in their market. We negotiate the rates for them. We put together the scripts we've tested over many years, and then we help them tweak things over time. So some people come to us and be like, I'm spending 5,000 a month. Uh, do I need to spend more? And we'll we'll get their numbers and we'll be like, you know what, with your market, we think we should probably up it to seven grand. We'll go negotiate another couple thousand dollars. Um, we actually have several clients this year because they're doing so well, pretty much double or triple their ad spend. Uh, and we do that um, 
smart. You know, we don't just double or triple it right off the bat. We'll increment incrementally increase it for them until we find we figure out we find that speed, sweet spot that's the best return for them. So uh, um I've got to reiterate what you just said. Uh, first of all, you know, I've done five infomercials. <laughs> One of them uh Guffy Ranker produced. Uh, and I and all of this stuff that you do or and that is done in the in the process going through people totally underestimate the amount of work it is. I remember uh, Guthy told me that they do 20 infomercials to get one or two to succeed. Mm -hmm. And they know what they're doing, okay? And they got the media in in, in control and so forth. So uh, I don't want you guys to underestimate the power of letting somebody do what they do best and getting the hell out of their way and let them do it. And I say that everywhere I go. It's such a hard lesson for people to learn. So you do everything from beginning to end, basically. And you you will... um, Create the commercial. Of course, the client has to be part of that, right? Because the client is in the commercial or not. Well, it depends. Um, I would say 80 to 90% of our clients are in the commercial. Um, If they don't want to be in the commercial, I will do the commercial for them or we will hire someone to do the commercial depending on do they want like an older person? Do they want, you know, there's all kinds of different factors that um, a company may want to represent their brand. But in my opinion, I think it's best for the client to do it because they get the credibility. I mean, you've seen it, right? The credibility when you're on TV, that people just, they feel like they know you. They feel like they, uh, they're going to, they respect you more. The conversations are different. Um, so I like to personally brand people as well as, um, you know, the, the brand of their business as well. So I should be on TV for the older market and you should be on TV for the younger market. Right? <laughs> well, the good thing is, you know, what's interesting is we, it, it's funny because when people um, onboard with us, we get their birthdays because we'll send them birthday gifts and all that kind of stuff. And it's funny because people will give us their birthday and I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I graduated high school after you were born. So we actually have people that are 21, 22, 23 years old that are doing their own TV commercials that are still appealing to the older audience because that's that's what our audience is. Typically, my audience is me. We know that we have data well, to prove that. Basically, the only difference is it's lower income. It's older demographic, well, lower income, true. and I, it's probably been a while since you've gone into a house and met with a seller. But if you really, were two days ago, is that right? Good for you. Still doing it. Okay. Uh, but think well, about I'm it. When you good. walk into a house, how many times do they have the TV on? I don't know if you've noticed that or not. Uh, every once in a while. But, yeah, to, yeah. I, I look uh, back because I haven't done acquisitions for about seven years now. But I, I, as as we started the TV program, I'm like, I now remember so many people having the TV on when we walked in. They were watching TV when I'd walk in, walk into their house. So. All hours of the day. Yeah. All right. So you buy the media, and you buy you buy our, uh, uh, the uh, uh, what is it called? Run of the the media that's placed all over the d- uh, time frames during the day and the night run of the mill media you know what i'm talking about yeah Basically. yeah we'll buy we buy um broadcast tv so mm-hmm. cable is a whole different animal we have done that before we can do that but we like to choose broadcast tv so we will go to those stations negotiate the rates and the great thing about so people people will be like well isn't tv uh getting a little bit outdated aren't people more people going to streaming well the older demographic doesn't stream as much. And those that are lower income don't necessarily want to pay for cable or streaming. And if they do want to pay for cable, they're going to buy the lowest package. They're not going to buy, you know, yeah. the things yeah. that they don't have to buy. And there's some people that don't even invest in cable or TV. They just still get what we call over the air TV. So True. they're still getting it without having to pay anything. Yeah. So we buy on those stations that everybody is going to see, not just those that pay um, the amount of money that they need. The to. reality of it is we we can't hit all the media anyway. We can't hit all the markets. Well, we're, in our case, buying houses, we're only going to, uh, to advertise in our own markets. So frankly, cable TV wouldn't make any sense anyway, would it? No, it doesn't. And it, it's it's a, a higher income demographic and it's just way more expensive. Like even if it did hit, hit a demographic, we can buy other stations that are probably about a third of the price that hit more people. And so it just makes more sense and frankly, uh, to, that's, to that's buy a big that. Key, big key right there. You pay too much, you're not going to win, no matter uh, all the other elements involved in it. So you're, are you do your commercials run all through the day, twenty four hours a day, even after hours? 
Yeah. So like I said, we have a formula. We have certain shows that we know that the older demographic watches. So, um, but the cool thing is, is that we also get a bunch of um, kind of late night kind of commercials that are very inexpensive that believe it or not, there's still a pretty decent viewership. But because people just don't want to buy those spots, we can get them really cheap. So we can get we can get late night spots for between a dollar and five dollars that thousands of people are watching. And one of the crazy statistics um, uh, that I like to share is if you do a direct mail campaign, if you want to hit a thousand people, you're going to spend about 500 bucks if you do a 50 cent postcard, right? To hit that same thousand people with TV commercials is only about five dollars to hit that same thousand people. Right. So you can hit a hundred, you can, you can get about a hundred more impressions from TV commercials than you can postcards. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Well, not only that, when I'm running, you only do direct response marketing, which means we have a call to action asking them to call uh, in the commercial. So the thing I like about it is you get instant results and you, you can quickly determine what's going to work for you and how to, because we're going to test small and roll up uh, big if we get a hit and uh, you can quickly determine your results. In other words, you don't have to wait for everything to get printed and everything to get mailed and wonder if it got mailed or not. Mm -hmm. Because literally the, the day you run is the day you're going to get the call. So uh, it is pretty much instant response. So uh, we better get to the dollars and cents here, Tony. Um, okay. I'm brand new. Uh, how much am I going to have to spend with you to get a fair result uh, from your experience? How it's you all try? it's all dependent on the market. So um, if you look at bigger markets, you're going to spend obviously a lot more. Um, smaller markets, we have a client that I was just uh, talking to uh, actually earlier today. He's in a small market of a few hundred thousand people, so he doesn't have to spend that much. And when I say that much... Um, you're looking at about four to $5,000 a month in a smaller market. And then it all goes up from there. You know, New York city, for instance, hits, um, I think it's like, is it 15 or 20 million people in that market? Just because the, the, the reach is so big. So that, I mean, that's just astronomically high. Um, LA is kind of the same way, but then you have a lot of markets where you hit between 300,000 to 500,000, even up to a million people. Um, you're still going to spend about five to $7,000 a month. Well, I got a million and a half. <laughs> and that's, I don't think that takes in consideration all of the bergs outside of the city limits. I'm not sure. But anyway, it's a larger market. I've learned that no matter what media you use, the bigger your market, the more it's going to cost per lead. You yeah, more that? you spend typically cost per lead. But at the same time, some of those bigger markets also do, do bring bigger returns. So it depends yeah. on how you look at it. And the bad part about it is I can't target a specific part of my city. That's true. Like I can with mail. All right. So um, give me the total picture here. What? Uh, let's forget the media spend because that's entirely up to whoever was watching. What are going to be my costs to get you up and running and, and um, on my team and hopefully generate enough leads to drive my business? Because I personally am trying to fix that same problem right now, Tony. I, mm -hmm. I, I got an acquisition that says January and we bought some houses and we're not getting near enough leads. And mm -hmm. we spent some money on sources that just didn't work out for us. And yet some of my students are having great results with the same sources and they're in smaller cities. Mm -hmm. So I'm coming to you and I say, what are you going to do? What's going to cost me to get you producing me a good supply of leads? Yeah, good question. So we like people to, to, to book a call with us to go over that, but um, it's not... And the reason I don't like to talk prices on podcasts is because we change things up every so often. We start at a very low price point. We've kind of increased our prices over time. Um, but I'll just tell you our management fee. We we charge a thousand bucks a month to manage the commercials. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you look at it from a time perspective and what it takes to uh, do TV commercials on your own, for instance, uh, we had a client um, who started at $7,000 a month in his market. He increased it to 10,000, then increased it to 17,000. And just recently, I think just yesterday, the day before, said, we want to go to 27,000. And for him to go do that on his own, to figure out what stations to call, all that kind of stuff. I mean, it would be so much brain damage and time for him to do. It took us a week, week and a half to go back and negotiate rates and get him the new right. side. You're dead on right. Okay. Uh, and it takes years to learn your craft. I can tell you that from experience. And 
you just won't succeed. You got to have that behind the scenes uh, look at it and, and the resources that you have and the connections that you have. Even just getting the media chief is huge. Okay, so what do I, what has to be uh, done to create this commercial? Do they have to, where are you at anyway? Uh, I'm in San Diego, but we, what we do is we will set you up in your market to shoot the commercial. So we make it super simple. We eat the scripts together. We coach the the TV crew on, and, and they do this for a living. So they, they kind of know how to do it already, but we tell them exactly how we want it done. Um, we'll put the scripts together. We'll make it super easy. So Ron, if you're like, Hey, I want to get on TV, what's your budget? We'll give you an, we'll give you a range of what you, we think you could spend in your market. You decide what your budget is. We go to the stations, negotiate the rates. Once you're good with that, we do the scripting. Uh, and then we send it to the stations. We'll send you the script as well. If you want to read it beforehand, which we recommend at least reading it. Uh, but most stations have teleprompters. So really all you have to do is go there and read the lines uh, on the teleprompter. It takes usually about 15 minutes. They send the footage over to us. We produce it in our format. Um, and we, we coach you through what... Uh, what um, uh, website domain to use in the commercial, as well as the phone number, which we want it different than all of the other domains and, and, uh, and phone numbers you use so you can track it. Uh, and we help, uh, w- help you set that up all on the back end. So yeah. really yeah, I mean, when it I... comes down to it, you have about an hour to two hours, maybe worth of time dedicated to meeting with us and just approving things and going and shooting the commercial. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we do the rest on the back end. Well, we have our own studio here at Global. There you go. Uh, do you have scripts? I mean, that's not a very long script for 30 seconds. No. So, um, uh, we worked that out later anyway. Incidentally, do you do commercials for people outside of the real estate business? We do. Um, so uh, the media company that I teamed up with, we have over 100 uh, real estate investors running TV commercials. And we also run commercials for over 100 other business outside of TV. Anything from accident attorneys to HVAC to roofing. When it comes down to it, most of the elements of TV are pretty similar. The big difference is what stations and shows are you on, right? And then obviously just script in for different uh, well, I ask you uh, that for different businesses. For, for global publishing, because we used to run TV way back. I uh, haven't done it in a lot, a lot of years. We but we used to have a lot of success just running. Uh, I think they were 30-minute shows, though, but you always got 60-second commercials with them. So uh, TV is not dead. I know that. So again, I'm getting started. And um, by the way, listeners, do not hire him or anybody else to generate leads for you until you learn how to handle that closing call. Because if you don't, you're just wasting your money and blowing a lot of good leads, which is a, what a whole lot of most, in fact, new investors do. They don't know what to say on the phone. That's scripts. Same thing. We need to make this commercial. The world runs on scripts. Hey, we have all those scripts. In fact, if you uh, you can go to uh, ronsgoldclub.com and get them for for free. It's $59 a month. They're, all my scripts are there. And you can do, uh, or you can watch an infomercial on how we buy terms deals at ronlegrand.com forward slash terms. If you don't understand what that's all about, you'll get very excited, especially when you couple that with Tony generating the leads for you. Um, I'm excited about this as well. I've been wanting to do, you know, I, I've been wanting to do TV for a long time. I haven't done it because, I just didn't have anybody on hand to put all the pieces together like you. So um, it's a thousand dollars a month plus whatever media I want to spend. Uh, what else? Um, I think, like you said, just be ready for the leads. You know, we we have had new investors come on with us. Um, if they have sales experience, if we feel like they can run the numbers, they can handle the leads. You know that type of thing. Um, I would say if there's anybody who is already spending money on marketing, when we have someone that comes in and, and applies to to for one of our spots, if they're spending at least, I'd say, five grand a month, I would say it's an absolute no-brainer. De- depends on the market, of course. If it's a market that's really expensive, it may not make sense. Uh, but if you're spending money on other things, because TV will help your other marketing. Uh, we have multiple times per year that we will have someone call us from postcards and say, we got a stack of postcards but we only called you because we know you're on TV and we know you're credible and we get the first at bat. And sometimes we get the only at bat because they don't want to call those other people because they don't want to have to call 10 different people to try and get 10 different estimates. Whereas they think we're, they know we're credible just because we're on TV and would rather just call us directly. Um, We've actually tested as seen on TV 
on our website and it converts 50% better. So as seen on TV with the stations that we're on. Um, so we coach our clients through putting the branding of as seen on TV on every single uh, marketing campaign they have and figuring out how to tie it with their commercial, which again, just brings so much credibility. Uh, and that return that I mentioned to you is not including what I just mentioned to you. So if someone calls us from a postcard and says, we called you because we saw you on TV, we don't even count that towards the TV return on investment. We count that towards postcards. It just happened to be that TV helped that. Um, so there's so many different elements outside of TV or benefits, I should say, other than just straight return on investment, which is why I tell people five to 10 times return on investments, which we, we've seen over the years. But even if we got like a two to three times return on investment, because of the amount of credibility branding that is brought to us, um, we think that even if you got a two to three times return, it would still be worthwhile. Sure. Hey, I was just thinking, uh, I'd want to create about five commercials. What's that again? I'd want to create about five commercials. Okay. Uh, and let you test them one right after another. You know, one week, one, another, another week, one, and measure the results because one of them might be way out distancing the rest of them. We'll uh, never know to you test, which I hate that word testing. <laughs> For 40 years, I've been testing, <laughs> <laughs> always testing, trying to beat the control. Uh, so uh, how long would it take to get this commercial on the air? Uh, we've had people that have been on the ball and gotten us what we needed where we've gotten on, uh, gotten them on the air in less than three weeks. Um, we like to say four to six weeks just to be safe because it's going to take us some time to negotiate with the stations, meet with our clients, you know, prepare the budgets, get the, the time set up with the stations. Um, our average time is probably right around 30 days, maybe a little less. So we can get it done pretty quickly. All right. So running TV during Christmas season is probably going to cost more, isn't it? Um, well, so when we do schedules, so for us, if, if our clients in January are still clients, like for me, we do our schedule for the whole year. So it's going to be the same pricing throughout the whole year. Now, if you start on Christmas or start in November, there's a potential that it could be a little bit more expensive. Uh, but honestly, in my opinion, we probably wouldn't start you in November, December. We would probably start you in January. If we can't get you on by, I would say, probably sometime in October, um, just because November, December does get a little bit slower. But for someone who's running commercials like we've been running for 11 years now, we still run all through the holidays because a lot of people stop their marketing, whereas yeah. we want to stay in front of everybody all year round. Are you a Dan Kennedy fan? Uh, I know Dan Kennedy. I've seen some of his stuff, but I haven't followed him heavily. That man has made me more money than any other human being alive from what he's taught me on marketing. Mm -hmm. And uh, you just said what brought that up uh, when everybody else quits is when you want to when you want to start. And he also said, if you want to uh, always beat your competition, just be willing to spend more to generate leads than they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As long as you have a back end that you can turn into cash, which we do in real estate, we got a big high transaction value. Uh, for and here's what I love about these leads they are calling us you can't get a better lead than that they're mm -hmm. calling us so now I had a question for you and I totally forgot what it was Tony oh uh, where do you want people to go to get your application and get get the work started yeah go to uh, the mentorpodcast.com forward slash 10x TV again to uh, the mentorpodcast.com forward slash 10x TV um, we'll know that, uh, you guys came from, from, uh, from this podcast here. We'll take good care of you and give you, uh, give you a good deal on, uh, on TV. Yeah. Um, so we can, what we can do is we can, first of all, see if your market's available. Um, and then second, give you a quote of what it would take to spend in your market. So we've got a, a map of the, uh, United States of the TV markets. We can show you how far it reaches and what the ad spend would be and see if it makes sense for you. Okay you're concerned about some markets not being available that would, uh, I mean if they're a large market that is I, I mean one person couldn't handle a large market anyway so how do you handle that distribution uh, yeah we, we look at the size of the market and decide whether we have uh, two or three people in a market most markets can handle two two people if you're in a large market it could easily handle three there's actually some markets that could probably handle more than three and it's kind of funny someone will come to us and be like um we'll tell them we have someone else in their market and we'll look at their numbers and 
um, we're like, there's a million people. And even if there's 500,000 people, let's say in, in a TV market, they're concerned about one or two other people being on TV. And if you, if you look at the numbers, that's, yeah. you know, rounded out three people per 150,000 people in that market. The chances of you saturating the market with TV with that many people, when you have hundreds of people that are texting and cold calling and sending direct mail to the yeah. same list. And the cool thing about TV is you're going to hit people that aren't on those lists. Yeah. You know? Well, and also there is no two people going to be doing the same thing at the same time to the same group. And just don't don't worry about competition. I've been telling people that all my life. Let them worry about you. Let them, when they see you on TV, let them worry about that. Uh, and even if you had 10 people in the market, you're, you very rarely are going to be competing with each other because uh, whoever's ad is on when that person sees it and decides to make a decision is the one they're going to call. Now, someone might think they're all the same company, but <laughs> that's all yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw you on TV night last night. Well, that's good. I, I wouldn't tell them, but I wasn't on TV last <laughs> night. But yeah, that must have been me. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, one more time. The mentorpodcast.com forward slash. 10x TV. Yeah, you better write that TV. down. Yeah. And you go there and they'll get an application to send to you to determine whether you can handle them or not. Is that it? Yep, exactly. Yeah. And we call it 10x TV because we feel like you hit 10 times more people, 10 times faster, 10 times easier with 10 times more credibility than any other marketing channel. Right. Um, so I love eat and breathe TV right now. I just think it's the best uh, marketing method out there and just love getting real estate investors results with TV. All right. Okay. Is there anything that uh, we should talk about that I didn't ask you? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I've been in this business a long time, not quite as long as Ron, but you know, 22 years, I've seen a lot of things. Um, TV has been the most consistent thing for me. People ask me, um, you know, starting out, what would you do differently starting out 22 years ago? And I tell them two things. One is find someone, a mentor, a mastermind group, a coach, someone or a group of people that can help you in this business. Because I, I spent 10 years trying to figure it out on my own without asking for help. You and back right. then, we didn't have Facebook groups. And yeah. even YouTube was just up and coming. I mean, there's a lot of different things that, that I didn't have starting out that everybody has now. And the second thing is, I wish I would have done TV sooner. You know, yeah. I, I didn't start TV until, uh, what is it, 11 years in business, 11 or 12 years in business. And man, if I had started like year two to three, once I was getting going, I can only imagine how much further I'd be today. Uh, you're running TV for yourself today? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. What What's the most kind of calls you get? Mostly uh, ugly junkers or nice houses and nice areas? Uh, mostly junkers. I mean, anytime you do a commercial that says, we'll buy your property as is, and you don't have to do any more repairs, you know, that kind of thing. People usually know you're trying to buy fixer upper houses, but we still find newer houses that, you know, we get that we may be able to refer to an agent and get a, you know, referral commission or some, some people sell us houses that are in pretty good shape for a, a major discount that we can still buy and, and make work. Uh, but like you said, um, the quality of calls that you get when people are calling you, that means that they actually are wanting to sell. They're not just responding to a text message or a Facebook ad that they're just putting their address in just to see what it's worth. And uh, those are easier to negotiate because they trust you more. And the cool, the cool thing is also is that typically you're the only one that they call because you're hitting them at the right time. It's not they just got a pre foreclosure letter or you know started getting into foreclosure and then they get ten different postcards and then they call you know maybe three or four of them. It's you are hitting them right as they're thinking about it because they've seen your commercial enough that right when they're ready they may call you uh, at that time. And you go out there, you're the only one that is at the appointment, which makes it easier to negotiate because you don't have a bunch yeah. of other people you're competing against. Yeah, that's true. So uh, you can't pick your area. So there's really no segmenting you can do except the what is it, the, the, the whole county, I guess. You, can, you can't segment it down any closer uh, when you're running these TV. Uh, you can't. TV's TV. Yeah, uh, typically what they, well, not typically, but what they do is when they set these markets up many, many years ago, um, they would take a major market and then they would just surround it with all of the surrounding areas up to either the state line or to the next surrounding area that uh, is is next to the major, next major metro. So when you look at someone says, I want to do Charlotte, North Carolina, it's not just Charlotte, it's probably going to be 10 to 20 suburbs, give or take 
um, that are going to hit it as well. Same here. Uh, you can go, you can go a hundred miles and still get the TV stations here. Some of them in any direction, except East. Cause there's an ocean out there. Yeah, exactly. All right. So that's all I can think of right now, but I am going to get this thing um, edited and well, I guess we don't really need any editing, but uh, and try to get it out to uh, a group we got coming up in a couple of weeks that are our top, top tier. And uh, I'm always looking for new ways for them to generate leads. And if you'll hang on here a minute after we're through, I'd like to ask you a couple more questions concerning myself, which don't apply to them. All right. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ron. Appreciate it. That's all for this edition of the Mentor Podcast. To connect with Ron and learn how you can attain financial freedom, as well as up-to-date strategies to grow and protect your wealth based on today's discussion, go to www.connectwiththementor.com.